Amen. In every game, there are all kinds of parties. There is, there are the players, and there are the spectators, and there are referees, right? Referees, and even among the players, obviously, there is a home team, there is the opposing team. The players are the really people who make things happen. That's why we're there. We're there to watch them play. Spectators are there to watch things happen. Everybody has, you know, their role. You know, players need spectators. So they thought, at least until, you know, but players still need spectators. Did you watch uh, the Super Bowl and saw those fake, fake spectators that they put in between just to make the player feel good about himself, right? <laughs> Players make things happen. They are the reason why we're there. They are the people that are playing. They are the people that are making things happen. Spectators are there to watch things happen. Players get the reward. Spectators just get the thrill, right? We get a 90-minute, two-hour thrill. You know, we get to brag about our team. You know, we get to go around. But players get the reward. They get the money. They get the goodies, right? You know, and they, they get rewarded for their labor. It's very, very important. That is also true in the game of life. In the things of the spirit, that is also true. In the kingdom work and business, that is also true. Unfortunately, there are prayers, players and there are also spectators. Now, even though that is not how God designed it to be. My goal is to challenge you to stop being a spectator. Uh, spectating is not what you were designed to be and to do. Right? You were designed to be players. You were designed to be shakers and movers. The interesting thing is, even when we talk about players, you see, there are players that we see, there are players that we don't see. What you don't understand is behind those, either it's 24 or 20 or whatever the people playing, there are hundreds of other people that are responsible for those actively playing for those two, three hours. You know, there are people who support them. There are people who, you know, there are the ball boys. There are, there are coaches who ensure that they are, you know, they play very well. Who ensure they are in shape, they are in form, right? There are physical therapists who help them when they get injured. There are, uh, you know, psychologists who help them with their mind, you know, frame of mind. You know, they have all kinds of people. There are nutritionists who help them with their diet. You know, there are, you know, there are priests who actually help them to, you know, to focus and to, to have their mind, their spirit in the right place. I mean, there are people who help them, support them. There are hundreds of people who actually play. You know, without those hundreds of other people, the players will see will not necessarily be able to play. Those people are the people who make things happen. And the rest of us, we watch, we enjoy, we get the thrill. The people who make things happen, they get the reward. They get, obviously, earth reward. They get money. They get whatever they needed to get. And uh, the rest of us, we actually get to spend, and we get a thrill, and we move on. But in the things of the Spirit, you get to choose what you want to be. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24, Apostle Paul says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But only one gets the price. Run in such a way as to get the price. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Start telling us about, you know, in the race of the kingdom, we're not competing against each other. Obviously, in the game of life, there is competition. In the, in the, in the race, in the spiritual race, we're not competing. In fact, we complete. In fact, everybody has their own race set before them, all right? You are competing against your, the agenda of God for your life. At the end of the day, you are going to be measured based on God's plan and purpose for your life. 
based on what you did with everything that God gave to you, whether it's your time, whether it's your money, whether it's your gift, whether it's your friendship, whether it's the, you know, everything that God gave to you, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be measured based on what you did with it. But he's saying that everyone will compete in the game. They're going to strict training. So we don't just play, we train. They do it to get a crown that will not last. Now, the crown, the prizes, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the cup that they get, they don't last. The money, they don't last, all right? They wouldn't, you know. But we do this. We run our race to get a crown that will last forever. Everything that we do for God, everything we do for the kingdom, the reward lasts forever. I don't know about you. That should motivate you because they last forever. So Apostle Paul concluded, say, therefore, anywhere you see therefore, you should ask, what's the, the therefore, therefore? All right? Therefore is always there for something. So therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. So look, that's why I don't do it aimlessly. I'm focused. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. So I do it, I apply myself. I do my best. I apply myself. I, I strike a blow to my body. That means I discipline my body. I don't just follow my body's feelings, right? I don't just follow my feeling. I don't just entertain everything that my body wants. Because if I do that, I will lose the price. Athletes, natural athletes, athletes don't do that. They are disciplined. You know, they, they, they eat. So, and it's amazing how they my son started playing, obviously, was playing soccer. And then the more he got involved, I realized that the more he all of a sudden was concerned about his food. I mean, all of a sudden, he, he started, obviously, he played soccer, then he started doing wrestling. And all of a sudden, he started really being strict with his diet. He started really not wanting to drink soda anymore. I'm like, really, teenagers? No. A teenager doesn't want to drink soda? Wow. The motivation was to be fit, to be in shape, to be able to really, really compete very well, to have enough energy. And that is also how it is in the things of the spirit. We must know that it is not something we do casually. Many times we approach serving God casually. I mean, we give him our leftover energy. You know, we just do it when it's convenient. We do it if it is easy. We don't go out of our way as much as we should simply because in our estimation, that is not as important as every other thing we do in life. That is not as important as our job, as our businesses, as our this, as our that. No, Apostle Paul says here, no, the crown of doing something for the kingdom, they last forever. They last forever. So we should have a good perspective when it comes to things we do for God because the reward is not just here on earth. The reward is forever. It follows us. The Bible says we'll all appear before the judgment seat of Christ where we will give account of everything that we have done in the body. The judgment seat of Christ called Bima is the judgment of believer. It's the judgment of reward. Many people don't know this. There are two kinds of judgment. All right, there is what is called the white throne judgment. And that is the judgment of unbelievers. So God, when people think about judgment, they think of judgment as we all go before God and he tells you you are going to hell or you are going to heaven. You know, no, that's actually not what it is in the scripture. There are two judgments. There are two judgments. There is the white throne judgment. People who go to white throne judgment, they are condemned already. It is the judgment of condemnation. 
Now, the reason why they still have to be judged is so that God can be just. So God will play their life to them, right? It will show them why they deserve, you know, hell. And by the time God plays it, they will just agree with God because it will be so obvious, right? They will just say, you know what? This is what you did. This is how I confronted you with your sin. This is how I sent people to you to bring you to Christ. This is how I sent preachers to you. These are the time when you were convicted. You almost made the decision, but you changed your mind. You see that I, I did everything, and this is how you live your life, so that is why you are not able to come with me, you know? And that, is, that will now be your portion in Jesus' name. But for those of us who are believers, there is what is called the judgment seat of Christ. It is the judgment of reward. Now, people who go to the judgment seat of Christ, they are already saved. All right? Because our salvation is not by works, it's by grace, right? Our salvation is simply based on the fact that we put our faith genuinely in Jesus Christ, right? He paid the price for our sin, you know, and so when we go before God, obviously we are, we are righteous because of Jesus Christ. We accepted him, we walk with him now. But even then, there is now how we live our life. That is why it's very important. In fact, there is even our words, because the Bible says even every idle word will be judged. You know, how we make use of our talent, talents that God has given to us. If you are gifted, if you are blessed, God has given you talent, God has given you gift. How are you using it for God? How? You are a believer. God owns you. God bought you. God purchased you. He saved you. He redeemed you. He's going to, he's going to make sure you go to heaven. I mean, isn't that amazing? He's going to ensure you are not lost. And that's on him. The least he expects is for you to live your life for him. That's the least he expects. You know, so we are going to have to give account of how we live our life, of every words we speak, how we spend our money, how we, how we serve, how we spend our time. You know, those we're going to give account of. And the Bible says some people, not, not people here, of course, their, their work will be burnt. They say it will be tested by fire. You know, that's the, that's the metaphor. That is a, it's as if our work will be tested by fire. So some people's work, they are like just hay, wood, because they are, not, they are done, you know, without thought. They are just done, you know, they didn't really put so much. If they want, they show up. If they don't want, they just, you know. He said their work, it will be burnt by fire. And they will escape, they will make it to heaven, you know, but they will make it like someone who just got their house burnt and survived. I mean, you are so happy you survived, but you are so sad you lost everything. I mean, that's a weird feeling. I mean, if you met people who got their house burnt, I mean, they are, on one hand, they're happy that they, they made it, but on another hand, you are lost, right? You're just like, wow, everything, my pictures, you know, my certificates, my clothes, my everything, my gold, my everything, just, you know, it just got taken, zoom. If, you, if you've had something taken from you, there's a weird feeling. I remember my car got stolen once. What a, what a feeling. What a feeling that you park your car, you walked inside, and you came out, and you look. And you, you're like, you shake your, you're like, what is going on? Am I dreaming here? And it's no longer there. You feel robbed. You feel used. You feel like a fool. I mean, you just feel all kinds of stuff. I had to, I had to call a friend of mine who took me home. And that was the first time in a long time I was sitting in the, in the driver's seat, just driving me to my house. I'm like, wow. But it's a lot worse than that, that you lose everything. This is eternity we are talking about. Of course, I got insurance. I got a rental car next day, you know, and all the nine years. But you're talking about eternity now. You're talking about you, those people who escape, they've lost everything, all right? That should not be how we want to spend our eternity. No, 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 that's not, that's not. I mean, you... 
You don't want to say, oh, yeah, yeah. Some people say, you know what, it doesn't matter. I just want to make it to heaven. I don't care. Even if I'm just a gate man in heaven, even just I'm a gatekeeper there. You know, I don't care. I just, you know, you're going to care. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to care. Many of us are immigrants, right? I'm sure you thought like that. I just want to go to America. I mean, I don't care. I can sleep in train station. I can sleep anywhere. It doesn't matter where, <laughs> right? That's what you get. Just get me the visa. I don't care any neighborhood, anywhere. I would just go. Do you feel like that now? <laughs> That's how it's going to be when you get to it. You can say, I don't care now. I don't care for reward. I don't care for this. I just want to make it to heaven. No. The Bible says some people are going to cry. But Jesus will wipe away every tears. But that's all he will do, just wipe the tears. <laughs> There's nothing, you can't go back to undo. And that is why let's give it our best. Let's run our race. Let's, let's run it with purpose. You see, forget about challenges you're going through. Life is full of challenge. You know, Jesus never promised us that it will just be each free. Things will just go fine. Everything will just work out right. You know, you're never going to suffer delay. You're not ever going to suffer loss in this world. You're never, you know, if something is not working, that means something is wrong with me. That is not true. That was never the gospel that the early church believed. For hundreds of years, that was never the gospel. You know, the early church... You know, they didn't have a lot. They suffered. They suffered losses. They were killed. They were murdered. I mean, can you imagine Stephen was killed, murdered for the sake of the gospel? <laughs> can you imagine how the wife felt? Can you imagine how the children felt? I mean, I'm sure they prayed. I'm sure they did everything. I mean, nothing happened. So the, in this world, we will have trouble, all right? But don't allow those trouble to really spread to stop you, to prevent you from serving God. Don't. You know, some of us, you know, our challenges are just, they're challenges. They're, some of us, they're going to be there forever. You know, there are some challenges we're going to live with. But let's keep our eyes on the prize. The most important thing we are living for is eternity. We're not living for now. We're not living. And Jesus told us over and over. He told us the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. All these things that we are excited over, we go over, things, they, they won't matter anymore after here. All right? What will matter is what we do for God, what we do for him, how we live our life relative to his plan and purpose for our life. It won't matter how much, how big a house we live. It won't matter what kind of cars you drive. If you reduce God to those kind of stuff, we are kind of cheapening God. It won't matter what car you drive. You know, it won't matter all those things. Doesn't mean you we shouldn't have them, for, but we should not make them the focus of our lives. That should not be the focus, all right? People should not... That should not be what you talk about, you know, my, you know. That should not be what drives you, what drives your joy, what drives your thing. No, 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 no. What drives you is I want to live my life to please and to honor God. I'm talking to young people. Please, don't let the world system color how you see life, all right? Don't let social media, you know, affect how you see life. Everything that we see will pass away. It will go away. Even if they don't, you will go away. One by one, we will go away. We will not be here. We will just, my wife, my wife will joke every once in a while. Say, we say, my wife will say, we, we talk about rapture, rapture. Rapture happens every day. People just leave every day. You turn around, it's gone. You turn around, she's gone. They're no longer here. You're like, wow. That's rapture right there. We all leave. But what are we leaving to, right? Where are we going? How are we preparing? I think we already took care of the biggest part. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That assures our destination, assures our destination. But 
What are we going into? What kind of life do we expect in there? Praise the name of Jesus. So we are all called to be players. Unfortunately, many choose to be spectators. Many choose to just watch. We are all being gifted. We've all been called to ministry. We've all been saved to serve. You know, we've all been called. We've all been anointed. We've all received talent from God. We've all received time. Don't go around and say, I don't have time. I don't have time. No, you do. You have 24 hours. And nobody has 26 hours. Nobody has 27. You have the time. You have life. You have health. You have it now. God gave you those things for a reason. But I wrap up by saying the most important players, and I think I referred to that before I stop, they are not always the most seen and the loudest. You know, and as we go through our report, I worked on it, a lot of people who they walk behind the scene. And in this church, in life in general, a lot of people will walk just like in the NBA, in the NFL. There are a lot of people who walk behind the scene to make those guys look good, right? If those people strike, guess what happened? No more NBA, no more NFL. The performance is no longer going to be there. You know, there are a lot of those people, and that's why the way God designed the body of Christ, God designed all of us to walk together. To fulfill our part. You may not be the seen players. You can be the unseen players. But at the end of the day, we all get measured and judged based on how effective we play our role. And I want you to think about that as we go forward. I want you to think about that in your life as a Christian. What has God called me to do? What is my gift? What is my talent? What is my ministry? What is my assignment? And what excuses am I giving? You know, what excuses? What am I saying? Why am I, you know, why am I, you know, what? And how can I fix that? How can I live a life of purpose? How can I live a life of meaning? Sometimes people overuse the word purpose. I'm finding my purpose. Oh, I want to know my purpose. I want to know my purpose. No, just do what you can do now. Typically, you walk into your purpose by being faithful with what is presented to you. What has he presented to you now? What assignment have you been given? What things have you been called to? Are you, you know, sometimes you're just drafted into a team or you're just invited to join something. I mean, just join. Just do it and do it well. Stop being fixated by some imaginary something purpose that is just going to appear someday like a genie in front of you. Hmm. Why you do nothing? No. What you're called to do, do it now. The assignments you're giving, do it now. You know, serve. Do it well. It might not be seen. Just do it well. God sees everything. Our Father sees us in secret. He sees it. He sees. He sees how we pray. He sees how we, you know, what we do privately, how we care, even when nobody knows what we give. He sees that. Every time you give an offering, do you know the Lord sees it? He sees it. It's recorded. Those things are recorded in heaven. They are recorded. Every time you do these things, they are recorded. And I want you to know that. That is, they are meaningful. They are not just doing life. They are not just doing motions. Be faithful with it. It is out of faithfulness that we walk into your purpose, that you walk into your purpose. It is out of faithfulness. If there's anything, it's just being faithful. You see, I used to, 
do so many things. Many, what people didn't know, I, I, was, I acted drama, sang, did every, everything you can think of. You know, prayer, I, mean, I was, I just wanted to be faithful in whatever I was called to do. Just, just, just be faithful. Don't be fixated about any other. Be faithful. You see, God, the steps of the righteous, they are ordered by God. I talk to a lot of young people who just say, oh, God, I have a calling of God upon my life. I have a calling of God. And I say, but what are you doing now? It's not about imaginary calling. Just what are you doing now? Do it now. That's what we want to see. Do it now. Show it. Show it, whether by cleaning, whether by helping other people, whether by, <laughs> whether by just do it. <clears throat> just make your life count. Calling is up to God. Open doors is up to God. Open doors for ministry, God takes care of all that. You can organize yourself into all those things. No. People say, oh, so how did you do it? People ask me. Even my dad asked me one day, how did you do this? I said, I don't know. <laughs> my dad was obviously, I mean, he remembers, this. this is just this boy that was growing up. How do you put everything together? The church, everything, how, how? I'm like, it's the grace of God. I said, well, that's just what everybody says. What is behind that? <laughs> I'm like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I just do my best. It is God. That's why, you know, Paul says, I want, uh, Paul plants, Apollo waters, but God gives the increase. See, so God is the one that opened doors. You see, if you see people doing big things, many of them can hardly tell you why, how. It's open doors. But I think what you should note is to be faithful with what you are doing now. What you are called to do, do it faithfully. All right? Do it because the Lord sees all that. And he rewards us based on that. And may the Lord bless you as you do it in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just pray that you will take this word. We've been challenged. We've been blessed. We've been pricked. And I pray that we will not just be hearers. We will be doers of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to go into our annual report. Thank, thank God for COVID. We're now going to do something differently uh, to assess the report. Uh, there will be a QR code. If you are watching at home, there will be a QR code that will be displayed. You can simply, you know how to use it. If you don't know, just turn your camera like you want to take the camera. All right? A link will come on. You can go to the link. You can also go to the website. At the top, you're going to see annual report link. On your phone, just click the link. And you're going to have access to the annual report. And we will all go it together. All right. I see Pastor Paul taking off his phone and trying to take. Uh... <laughs> Pastor Paul doesn't want to. Take last. I'm, I'm going to do it to QR code. We're going to do the QR code together, right? All right? Is it working for you? Yes. Wow. Even, even here? Wow. Woo! That's awesome. Let's put our hands together for our technical team. We made it happen. So we have our annual report. Uh, if you just flip through, it starts with my uh, address. I'm not going to read it. It's for you to read. It's for you to access. Um, it follows with our general overview. Average worshipers per week. This is, based, this is both online and in person. We actually have more attendance during pandemic uh, than before. Uh, that is amazing. This uh, page Three gives a snapshot of our church, and that's, you know, and uh, by the way, for those of you who are maybe participating in this for the first time, we do this every year, uh, you know, this is a family, this is a family of family, this is also giving an account from the leadership, from the trustees, uh, the ministers, giving an account of, you know, our, what you trusted us with, you trusted us with the church, with the leadership, and we're giving account. And we also want everybody to know where we are, what is going on in the church, and that's why we do this every year for 
I believe we've done it at least 14 of the 15 years, maybe 15 of the 15 years that we've existed as a church. All right? Uh, it, it gives you a snapshot of our revenue. Uh, we had the highest revenue in the history of our church. You know, for the year. During pandemic. I mean, that is amazing. You see the expense there. Uh, you see the attendance. I mean, you see the membership. Membership of the church is there in terms of my membership, decisions, new members. We had 60 people took A101 class. And that's amazing. In one year, during pandemic, 60 people took our A101 class. That is membership orientation class during pandemic. That, that's amazing. Uh, we had 18 new babies. Wow. People were active during pandemic. Uh, some of them before, right? We'll see what happens in 2021. Amen. All right, so we have uh, the next one kind of gives or in di some different things. We interest different people, I'm sure. You know, some of us want to know how we are doing on social media. Uh, so that's all displayed in, uh, in, uh, in the next page right there. Uh, page five, page six. We have uh, some of the stuff that happened. I want us to took place online. We were still able to do VITA. Some of these were impacted drastically, obviously, because of people's ability to go out and things like that. But I'm glad that ministry was still going on. That's the story of this, that the pandemic did not stop ministry from going on. So we still had VITA. Um, vacation Bible school still took place virtually. Uh, other things went on, other ministry highlights in page seven. Talks about some of the things we did. Uh, True Earth Ministry was very busy. Outreach Ministry did a few things. Children's Ministry continued to function, and we praise God for that. Uh, Global Mission, we had $30,000 donated to Mission in 2020. That's amazing. Amen. That is unbelievable. We did, uh, obviously, we did a lot of, we did support for ministry in Burundi, in India, and Uganda. Those are our constant places that we support. Pre-COVID, I was able to take a trip, so there was still a, a, a trip to uh, Rwanda. We supported, um, uh, we did the hope bag in a different way, and that was amazing. 11,250 was raised. And that went towards providing 400 old bags, you know, 400 blankets for orphans. 400 orphans received blankets, maybe for the first time in their life. A thick blanket that they were able to ha call their own blanket. Uh, many of the orphans don't have bed to sleep on. So we were able to buy 90 beds. Isn't that amazing? Um, then we have the financial report, which uh, Fadekemi will come just right after, after me to maybe to give a little bit more uh, content to that. But for those of you who just want to know, you know, the amount that came in is there, all right? And it's broken down into how they are, you know, they are broken down. We have the tithe, we have the offering, other revenue, Thanksgiving, just to know that these are kept, this record are kept, you see. When you give, you say, this is my tithe, this is my offering, this is uh, Thanksgiving, they are recorded appropriately, and it lets us know. It lets us know that 80% of our income still come from people who believe or who at least practice the art of tithing, all right? So I want to encourage you, those of you who do that, it is making a significant difference, right? Uh, 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 please continue to. I want to encourage people who are still not doing it. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you are, you know, whatever it is. I want to encourage you. You know, there's a blessing attached to that. Giving will always be rewarded. Sacrificial giving will always be rewarded. Amen. 
uh, and expenses are broken down also in how they, they went. And uh, we had net income of 386000 for the year. There are a lot of other, you know, analysis there that are given for those of us who want to know. I think some people, they, they thrive in all these histogram and all these things. They, they will go home and just devour them very well. For some of us, what came in, what came out, that's good for me. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. That's good. Let's move on. All right? Uh, I think uh, page 11 kind of gives us a little bit of, uh, you know, thing, uh, you know, in terms of membership class. You see that we did not do very bad. 2020, we still had 60 people took, you know. That's about the amount that we had in 2018. I mean, you would think that would crash. So special thanks to our, uh, uh, our Christian education ministry that were able to pivot and still able to do something. Without that, we would lose all that. So everything points to our ability to really be flexible, to think on our feet, and to step up and do stuff. Uh, some of the event highlights you know, are listed here. Distribution of food and things like that happen in the... You know, we, we were still able to have our retreat, and uh, the last page, or one of, you know, second to the last page, talks about the leadership of the church, the ministerial team, and the board of trustees. So, on the whole, I am pleasantly pre pleased uh, to let you know the state of our church is strong. Amen. It is very, very strong. it was not weakened by the pandemic. Isn't that amazing? We were not in disarray because of the pandemic. Uh, we were able to pivot, and that's very, very important. We were able to think on our feet. Every ministry, I want to say big thanks to every ministry, all ministry leaders, you know, who just didn't give up. We just said, what are we going to do? We can't meet. Can we still do something? I mean, everybody still found a way to step up and do something with their, you know, with their ministry. We we're not going to just give up and allow pan the pandemic to just dominate and rule over our lives. We say, you know what? What we are serving is bigger. I think about how first responders, how they, they took the pandemic, right? They didn't care so much about their lives, right? They say, you know, we are, we are called to save people's lives. And they step up and they save people's lives. I think about doctors, nurses. You know, you can say they are getting paid. No, they didn't have to do it. Some of them actually didn't get paid that much during the pandemic. All right? They step up. You know, they did their part to make sure. You know, EMT, grocery workers, all these people, I mean, you know, we, we can say all we want. If people don't, if people don't do grocery, people the grocery don't open, they don't have people to work. Will you be able to stay home and be work and be working and be saying I'm working from home? That's because there's some guy that, that's able to deliver some food to your house. So when we think about the story of the pandemic, we think about the story of people who risk their life in spite of the pandemic, right? and we'll still make sure we are able to continue. What happened to us, we'll have something bigger to offer, right? Those things they are offering, food, those are things that perish. What we offer is much more. The kingdom business is much more. The sad story is many people gave up. Many people, many churches were not able to stand up, were not able to. They didn't see the value of what God has given to us. But I'm glad that we see the value in what God has given to us. And we were not going to allow pandemic to rob us of the ability to still be a blessing to people, to still be a blessing, to still continue. And we never know how far, how much this blessing goes. I was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania yesterday to attend an ordination service of one of our former members who is now becoming an elder in his church, in our church, rather. And she had reached out. She's been out of here for maybe seven years at least, or eight years, seven years. 
and she had reached out months ago that she's going to get ordained and she would like me to be able to be there and speak and also perform, join the, the pastor to perform the ordination, which I said, well, we'll see, we, you know, with the pandemic. Thank God we were able to go yesterday, uh, drove down and just came back right away. And while she was introducing me, I mean, she had the honor of introducing me to talk about how before she came to Agape, she's lost faith in church. She's lost, she's suffered all kinds of abuse, church abuse. She, she used the word church hurt. Uh, she's lost faith, she's, she's, she's lost faith completely, and she's given up on church completely. Until, you know, her friend just say, you know, just come, just come. And, I mean, she came. And she said, this is where the Lord restored our faith. In church leadership, in church in general. And she rededicated her life to Christ and continued to serve. Yesterday, she was ordained a minister of the gospel. Amen. She was only here for four years. And those four years were not, it was sometimes kicking and screaming a little bit, you know. She actually said, I did not know the value of your leadership. I did not know the value when I was there. It was after I left that I realized the value of what I learned, what I was taught. Those little things encourage me, and they should encourage us that what we do here they last. They don't just end. It's not just from week to week. This is somebody that left seven years ago. And, you know, we get to be part of what God is doing. So you are part of a great work. Please continue to do it. The reward is not just for now. The reward is forever. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'm going to invite uh, our financial secretary. Where is she? All right, she's right here. We're going to go through um, the financial aspect a little bit more. Uh, and then she will be followed by the leader of our finance ministry, Brother Femi, who is also going to have a few minutes to give us some housekeeping issue. Then I'll be back. Okay, good. Um, I don't know if it's morning. Good morning, church. Um, here representing the board of trustees. And I'm going to briefly talk about our financial report for 2020. Um, like Pastor mentioned, it was an amazing year um, despite the pandemic and thank God for everyone's faithfulness. It's, it's a testimony of being committed to God no matter what is going on around us. So I'll briefly talk through the numbers and um, just give some explanation. Um, don't know if the slides are up. Okay. So before I start, um, like Pastor mentioned, you know, you've entrusted us as leaders to um, help steward the resources that come into the church and some of the things that we do to accomplish, um, you know, to accomplish the stewardship that you've entrusted into us is we plan and budget every year. Um, these are some of the guiding principles we towards the end of the year would involve a lot of our ministry leaders, um, the church office, the ministry personnel to assess where we are and to plan for the year ahead. How much do we think we're going to need to spend to um, achieve our goals as a ministry, as, as a church? Um, many of you are involved in this process, and that's part of how we remain accountable by planning ahead. In terms of our spending throughout the year, um, we remain flexible, but we are, our intent is to spend according to what we've budgeted for. We look at what's coming into the church. Um, we look at, you know, the projects that we have, the things that we've anticipated, things that may come up that we didn't plan for, um, and we track those things. But our goal is to spend wisely um, and to maximize our impact to achieve the mission of the church. We remain accountable um, by, you know, providing, um, you know, obviously by tracking the, the amounts that are coming in and the amounts that are going out throughout the year. Um, this past year, we uh, brought on an accountant um, to help us with our bookkeeping function at the church. And um, every month, she presents a report both to the board and to the pastor to show us a snapshot of where we are as a church. Um, in terms of transparency, I mean, everyone here, your giving is tracked on CCB. 
So on demand, you can always see what you've given to the church at any point in time, uh, as well as you know, if you ever have any questions about how the church is doing throughout the year, you don't have to wait until the annual report. You can always reach out to the pastor or to the board. We're happy to share with you the reports that we have. Um, I've listed out there. I'm not going to go through every single thing, just some of the things that we do behind the scenes to make sure that we're really living by these principles of accountability, of transparency, um, you know, and of being good stewards of every resource that God is sending into this house. We're not there yet. We continue to, you know, strive to do better. But um, as a church, I can, I can, and as a member of the trustee, I can tell you that the church does a lot behind the scenes um, to ensure that, you know, there's accountability for everything that you contribute um, into this household. Okay, uh, like Pastor mentioned, last year we had a revenue of 1.2 million, the highest that we've had. It was a 17% increase from the previous year. And, and again, given the circumstances that we had, that's, that's a testimony. Um, we, you know, when the pandemic started, I remember the, the second board meeting that we had. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty, and we were seeing some of the numbers that were coming from other churches, um, the averages that were being published about how churches were pretty much revenue was going down, giving was going down, but that was not the case for us. Um, a lot of this, the, the, the revenue is driven by tithing, and when we kept looking at the numbers in Q3 and Q4, it was just amazing that people remained consistent with their giving. People were giving even more than they had given before. Um, and you know, we know that you know, it's God that works in us to do his will. So we, we thank God for you being obedient as God was leading you to remain committed despite the uncertainty around you. Um, some of our other non-recurring revenue uh, that we received as a church, um, like many of you are aware, we have um, a, uh, the Board of um, Education in Brazil rents a part of our facility for, um, for school. Um, the revenue that came in from there was pretty much the chunk of our other non-recurring revenue that we had for the year. The other things that we had, PTL um, and other pledges that were redeemed. Um, the COVID-19 relief fund, uh, at, at the beginning of um, the pandemic, Pastor had um, raised a call for us to contribute specifically to this fund so that we could help in the community. And for members of our church who were you know, negatively impacted, we received $16,000 towards that fund. And again, that was an amazing <laughs> an amazing move of God because when you think about it, you know, some people didn't know if they were going to keep their jobs, but yet they were still giving. Um, the whole back fund Pastor mentioned earlier was um, 11 chaos contributions towards our missions. Okay. Um, giving platforms, um, amazingly, this year, pretty much over 90, 95% of our giving came through online platforms. Thank God we were already um, positioned to be able to transition easily here. Um, and and thank, you know, thanks to the finance ministry and everyone who worked with them as well um, to come up with new platforms to give, Zelle, Cash App. I know those are things we didn't have before. Those were implemented um, last year, and it really helped to keep our giving consistent um, without any hitch. Uh, giving online is also helpful because it's easier for us to keep track of the records without people having to stay here counting cash. Um, and again, you know, your funds are tracked real time. You can always see what you've given on CCB. Okay, in terms of our expenses, um, we had 839,000 in expenses. Um, this was up 13% from last year. Um, again, this was primarily driven by our investments in, in, in the church facility and in technology to help move our church forward. Um, like you're aware, church moved to online and while we used to have an amazing service here in person we started to realize there were things that needed to be tweaked for us to have an amazing experience online as well a lot of spending went towards that um you know to make sure that we had the technology for um you know to deliver service online in a way that you know we all can enjoy and really um effectively participate uh in church again down the line, we know that the future of church has changed forever. I don't think we're ever going to go back to how it was before after the pandemic. I mean, some things will return back to normal, but some of these investments are going to be long term. So we thank God that we had, we're positioned to be able to make those investments um, in 2020. 
the slide also shows some of the other breakdown, which is in the annual report that you have. You can always take a look at it, and if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be able to um, answer your questions. Um, as a church, we do have um, uh, we do have obligations in terms of debt. Um, this beautiful building costs money, <laughs> and it, we still have an outstanding balance of two million on it. Um, Last year, we was 2.09. This year is 2.02. So it's going down. We're paying down our principal and interest payments. And by the grace of God, at some point in the future, we'll be able to pay this off fully. But again, just to put it out there that this still exists. Okay. Um, your personal giving statements, you should have received an email on the 26th. Um, saying that you could go on to CCB to print out a statement of all your giving for 2020. This statement helps you to see what you contributed. Um, cash contributions are to non-charitable, uh, to charitable organizations, excuse me, are tax deductible. So when you're preparing your taxes this year, um, you know, please make sure you have this on hand to use. Um, this year, for the pandemic in particular, the, the tax laws were even amended. So I think if you had given at least up to $300, you can actually benefit from that. So make sure you um, check your emails. If you didn't receive an email or you just can't find it, you can email our finance ministry at finance at agapehousenj.org and they'll be happy to help you um, get that statement. Okay, I'd just like to say thank you again to, to the pastor, to the church administrator. The finance ministry works very hard um, behind the scenes. Um, and and Rafemi Amori, you know, his leadership, um, he'll be coming up very soon to share. But again, the, everyone working behind the scenes, like Pastor said, as a body, some people seen, some people not seen, helped make this happen. You're giving people, you know, tracking it and making sure that we're doing the right things in terms of how we're managing the finances and being accountable and faithful with the resources. It's teamwork, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. May God continue to use us for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I will invite uh, Brother Femi to come forward. Let's put our hands together. morning church nice talking to you once again i come every year talk i will call about i call it we call it housekeeping issues and i'll just take us through some few things that we need to talk about i will thank god for where god uh, where we are and uh, thank god for the faithfulness of this uh, members of this church because we listen you know i want to take, tell you that we don't want you to use check or something no no that god was preparing us for greater things ahead so by the time by them hit everybody knows how to give online Everybody can use good their phone and everything. So we are not affected. So thank you very much. And uh, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> now we give online. Now we have to move forward. Maybe later we have to start giving through even Bitcoin. You can be used to. <laughs> yeah, we have to. The world is, the world is moving. So, <laughs> so that is what is it. So I will go through some. Uh, so I'll just wait for a few things. Uh, they give us uh, the housekeeping issues. I want us to just talk about. So as I mentioned, about 80% of our giving actually came through online. And this online process we have, if, uh, we have two different types. Uh, we give a platform, we have the a, a how up, uh, on, on, um, app. Then we have a check, and we have cash. You can see how that actually online, as I said, when I come here, please, don't, we don't want to sit here every DC after church service. We, can't, we know it, it pays off. That's why we are. So, uh, and uh, so the next slide, I'll talk about the giving process. The giving process shows how we give. These are the various ways we give. The first one is, uh, I just try to make it very simple and then maybe graphical form. We see the AHAO family, where we give through our app. Actually, our app was developed and is used by mo most major churches. We call it a push pay, and we also through the CCB. When you get that one, when you get, give, we have the, uh, the one AHA family, you, through the push pay, that's what they want down, and uh, you get it, I go straight to our bank account. Can imagine? It takes us, when you pay, when you give, and through your line, and uh, through CCB, it goes straight to, it's pushed through push pay, it goes straight to the bank account, and that's it. 
and they, what I just need to do as say finance, I will just go there, check it, and just match it, manually match it to your name, and that's all. So unfortunately, when the pandemic started, somebody said, ah, we are also supposed to have to give through other means. So we now have to introduce Zelle, that we can actually give through Zelle, and also we can also give through uh, a cash app. And also in that case, the Zelle, when you give the Zelle, it goes to our Bank of America account, then that one now give us more work. Because when you give us through Zelle, we have to go there, we print it, then we have to manually post it to your profile in, the, in, in, our, in, 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 our CC, in the CCB. So we do that one every week. Every Sunday like this you give, we have to go and print it. It's like you give us a check. When you go through Zelle, it's not, even though it says online, it's, it's like a check. You go have to print it, then we have to go now and now put it, post it to your profile in CCB. What I do if we use the cash app, we use our a, a, a How app, just go straight to the bank. I don't need to do anything. We do, all they do is just to match it and that's all. So, uh, so, so these are those giving purposes that we have, the A How, the, our app. As I said, the app is very reliable and it's, uh, it's used by most churches. And uh, now I want to talk about now, you know, issue comes support. We have to talk about cash, I mean, uh, issues for running Zelle. Now, when you give through Zelle, as I said, make sure you write in the, in the Zelle section, there's a memo section whereby you write whether it is tight, offering, thanksgiving, it is important. That's how we can know. And please make sure you write your name in full. Uh, some, some people, they set up their Zelle account, depends upon how you set it up. If you just say, uh, if, uh, my name is Femi Simona Mori, if I just write Femi, there are so many Femi's here. So just say Femi, it will be difficult now to actually know who is that person. Is. And also, in the memo column of it, make sure you put the... Uh, the, the, the purpose, that is, uh, you, you designate the offering. And that is why you can be able to know how you have done it. As I said, it gives us more work. So I'm believing you. Uh, I mean, if you give those, make sure to make sure it is properly recorded that you give the notes, you give the note proper notes in, uh, in the memo section of uh, others, uh, uh, Zelle or Cash App. So when you give it to us, that's why, as I mentioned, I will print it, we cash it, and then uh, we post it to the profile. So going forward, as I said, hopefully by next year we should be we should be good, and there will be time when we start giving by cryptocurrency by Bitcoin, then we we, we get there anyway. So thank you so much, everybody, for what you are doing. This church is amazing. It's amazing what you have been doing. When I look at it everywhere, every week, I say, wow, it is amazing. It's just God that is just doing it. Keep on doing what you are doing, and uh, God will reward every member of this church in Jesus' name. We are going higher in the hope we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor doesn't mind whether it's cash or zeal or app. Uh, all his money, Barbara Femi minds, right? He, he, you know, let's make their job easy, uh, you know, because it's more work for them. But so the more we can use the app, and the app is safe. Uh, it's a reputable company, safe, so you are fine. Before I do the offering, I want to show us, uh, if tell you about a few things that we're working on. Uh, by God's grace, um, over the last year we've been trying, we've been working on our parking lot issue. Many of us, I'm sure, by the time I'm sure you've forgotten how it used to be with parking before pandemic, right? After pandemic, we're still going to go back to our parking issue. So we have started talking to the Conrail. Conrail owns the bushes behind the church. Uh, so the bushes behind the church across the length of the church is owned by a company called Conray. Our trustees have started to talk to them for over a year now, negotiating, uh, trying to really lease that space. And that space will give us additional parking. All right? Uh, we've had, so please pray with us. This has been a very difficult uh, uh, you know, process of talking to them, negotiation, uh, with the least amount per year, then we're going to be able to do the parking lot. All right? I actually have some pictures to show you of what it will, is potentially going to look like. So for so, those of us who can see, the front is our church. All right? That back is what we're talking about. At the back of the church is where you see that black and the lot. That will give us about 90 parking spots. All right? 
uh, on top of what we are. It almost double our parking spot that we have. Uh, so, so that's very, very that's something to please pray. And by God's grace, God has blessed us. This project is probably going to cost us about $250,000. Uh, we would not need to do fundraising for that because God has blessed us with, uh, in, in some ways. So, I mean, we're hoping that that will happen this year, this summer. We're able to close the deal in terms of agreeing and we're able to pave it. So by the time pandemic is over and we have more cars, we're able to do that. We're also working on upgrading our, our equipment uh, to become very, very online, to make our online presence much more powerful, much more uh, you know, uh, appealing, and be able to make much more impact. Uh, so you're going to be seeing that as well. We're going to be able to build a sound room. Uh, we're going to do so many things. And God, you know, we're, we're trusting God will be able to do this. So we have a number of projects that we are working on. And we're hoping this year we'll be able to do. Uh, please pray for us. Amen. All right. We're going to do our offering. Uh, and I think it's, I don't think we need to make a lot of noise about offering. Uh, you know, why we give. Uh, I wanted to say, we give primarily, and I wanted to tell you that we give to God. Obviously, ultimately, the person that rewards our giving is God, and God sees it. Now, God created his church as the vehicle to receive, to manage it, and to use it. This is not a system that started today. It's a system that started from even the Old Testament. Throughout the history of God's operations, he's always dedicated a place called his house where his people bring treasures and resources. So I want to challenge you, especially those of us who are still on the fence, who are still wondering, what is this church about? What do I give to? It costs a lot to really do this, uh, to reach our community, to impact the world, to do missions, uh, to even have services every Sunday. It costs a lot. Uh, that's how God designed that his people will be the one to, you know, uh, take care of that. So you are part of that. I want you to be a player, not a spectator. Uh, if you're giving, uh, all the means of giving are, on, are displayed online on your screen. Use the AL app, all right, so that Brad Femi can be happy. He won't be staying uh, all night trying to type all your information. Uh, if you don't have the app, you can download it. Or simply, you can do text to give. It's the same process. Text AL to 77977, and you'll be able to, it will send you a link, and you are able to, uh, you know, give through that link. All right? If you're here and you want to give in person, you can give in person here. There's a white box here. There's another white box there. You can do that. Uh, I want us to take our offering confession. Amen. Take our offering confession uh, together and we will pray. Let's go. One, two. I live in God's economy. Therefore, there is always enough for me. I am a giver, not a hoarder. I give generously. I give sacrificially. I give cheerfully. And I give faithfully. Because of my tithes, the devourer is rebuked. The floodgates of heaven are open. And blessings are pouring down on me. Because of my offerings, God supplies all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for this privilege to give you some of what you've given to us. It's a blessing to even receive to start with because there's nothing that we have that you have not given to us. So we acknowledge that and we release some of them to you as a statement, as a recognition, as an acknowledgement that they all came from you. And I pray for everyone doing this in obedience to you. According to your promise, you will reward them greatly. You will open the windows of heaven. You will release so much blessing. There will be no enough room to contain it. I pray you bless people so much more. We're talking about two million in debt for our building. Lord, you will raise members here who will be able to write a single check to wipe that up. 
we'll be able to say, what is the next project, Pastor? What is the next we're going to write? I pray you will release so much blessing upon this house. Because you know that blessing, apart from being a blessing to us personally, it will not go to anything sinful. It will not open go-go bar. It will not open weed store. It will only go towards the kingdom and something good, raising life, improving lives. So, Father, we pray you will do this in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a special from our choir. And after that, the Kinesgenev will come and lead us in prayer and close the service.